since I've done a video. Uh, been kind of busy around here. We've uh, had a lot of storm debris, damage. Around my part where I live, um, today I've got a few things I want to go over with you. Um, first and foremost, I'm going to try to go over my pole setup. And these are just the four basic poles that I use. And yeah, they're cheap. Uh, I can't afford to go out and spend three, four hundred dollars on a rod and reel setup. Uh, but I found four that work perfect for what I want. And I interchange different, various styles, bait and stuff like that. Uh, first one I want to go over, I've got a little uh, Zepco 33 setup on a tournament. Or tournament choice rod this is my popper setup and I can cast it a country mile uh, it's real easy to throw real quick decent retrieval um, this is a uh, this is a medium action rod not a fast tip it's a medium uh, but it's that Rod says 10 to 20 pound. I've got it running, I think this is 12 pound Cajun line for just my popper setup. Really good setup. Uh, next, I've got a deep jigging setup. Got it on another tournament choice. This is a rough neck. Uh, it says a seven foot heavy. And you can see I got a spoon on here. Uh, works very good for what I want. Uh, got it matched up with a Black Max. I think it's six, yeah, six four to one. Mainly just for vertical jigging with a spoon. Um, now this is another Black Max setup. This is the full Black Max rod and Black Max reel. Got them when they was on sale for 40 bucks, or actually I think it was, yeah, I think it was 39 for a match combo. Uh, got it matched up with some 30 pound braid, and I put a uh, rattle trap on it the other day just to see what was going on because we had some, we got some pretty murky water after the storm came through. And then I got my spinning setup. This is what I use for. Well, this is what I use pretty much for my Senkos. Uh, about really anything. Um, I got some uh, fluorocarbon on it. I think it's a uh, 12 pound fluorocarbon. Uh, set up on another heavy rod, seven foot length. Uh, it works perfect. Uh, the reel on, on it is a Shimano 2000. It was given to me. Probably the best reel I've ever owned. It's got perfect drag. Uh, I think it's... It does not say what the drag is on it. But it's a Stratic setup. Alright, so those are the four basic rods that I use. Alright, well, I'm going to go over a few baits with you. I only want to go over Cinco's. This is going to be how I rig them. Uh, what I do as far as keeping them on and not, you know, wasting Cinco's because they are expensive. Uh, I'm going to go over different hook sizes to use with them. How, how you can rig them, uh, wacky rig, Texas rig, uh, even Carolina rig. Um, but first and foremost, what I usually do is I've got my little tool right here for putting a O-ring on. I picked this up for two bucks. Um, my O-rings, I don't know if y'all can actually see all those O-rings. I got a couple on here. But, uh, the way I do it, I use automotive O-rings. You can buy them in a pack. You can go to like Harbor Freight, or you can just go to 
pretty much any automotive store and you can pick these things up a whole lot cheaper than what you're going to get like a pack of 10 at Academy or Dick's. Um, because I don't know why they think that they're so expensive, but they're not. They're just O-rings. But uh, usually the first thing I do, you see what I got right here. Uh, I do have two slid up on here. I'm going to show you one way and then I'm going to show you another way. But you can actually, all you do is take, slide it down in there, get it however you want it. Uh, I like, the way I do it is I take, figure out exactly where center is. As you can see on this little plasma tail, center is about right there. So take and slide it in to where about center is. And then I'll take and slide the O-ring off on it. That comes off just like that. Looks perfect. It's actually about dead center. You can tell when it flops. This is kind of the action that you want going down with it. For hooking, you can use pretty much any hook you want. What I usually use is I've got a 3 out octopus hook. Just slight offset. And what I'll do, I hope you guys can see this, but I'll start through just a little bit and just go right up under, keeping it with that opening. Just easy wacky rig setup. Um, the other way that I want to show you, in which it all depends on what you're really doing. Uh, I'll slide it back down in here, back in my tube, and I'll take and slide off another O-ring on it. And I'll get these O-rings to cross each other. And I'll do like a little X pattern. There it goes. Alright, but as you can see, then just a little X pattern right there on it. And with this, you will actually have, you can go in between the X. So, there again, I like using 3 aught. You can go straight through the side. I can do this without poking myself. And come straight through like that. Um, the only reason, and it's not for savoring these O-rings by any means, but the main reason I like to do it with a two O-ring style is because when a big bass hits it and you have it rigged the regular way, it'll come through and slide straight through his mouth. Your hookup ratio is a lot less. When you do it this way, and say so you're flopping along and he bites it, that hook automatically just goes right perfect and will usually hook up in the top of his mouth. It's a very, very good way that I found that it works perfect. Um, different setups. This is a catfish hook which I have found works perfect for doing wacky rigs. Uh, it's a little bit, a little bit different offset, as you can tell. You know, it's kind of a lay flat type hook. Uh, I'm not gonna put another O-ring on this, but you, you guys can kind of get the idea. And you go through, and then there it sits, right on the hook and as you go down you get the perfect action as to what you're looking for and there here's your straight shank weedless hook you can also use it I mean it, the, um, what you can do with a Senko is endless it really is um, 
I like using these right here if I know I'm in a real kind of brushy area. Some grass. I'll just use a straight shank. Just kind of go through and hook up. You can do it however you want on these. Then, uh, Texas rig, but I'll usually end up putting a bead in between my weight and my hook. So, on a Texas rig, the main thing you want to look for is you want to go through the top of the plastic at an angle, pull down, flip the hook, just so it covers up your eyelet. And then on this, you measure just exactly where you want the hook to come out at. So you know kind of where you got to go in at. You got to go in right down here at the bottom. Then you take, pull it, push it through. Now you have it perfectly straight. And what I like to do is I like to bury the tip back up in it. Right there. There's your Texas rib. And like I said, I like putting a bead in between my weight and my hook shank right here. Create that little snapping while you're underwater. Uh, I've had very good luck with it. Um, let's go over a few other baits besides for, well, let's go ahead and go over these Senkos right here. This is a plasma tail. Uh, it's done in green pumpkin, which is my absolute favorite color. I have just fell in love with fishing it on the lake I fish. Uh, I've got some other colors here that I use. Uh, this is a watermelon red flake. I don't know if you guys can see the flake in it, but it is a perfect setup also. And then I just got my regular, just my regular green pumpkin. No plasma tail regular green pumpkin setup. And those are the Cinco's that I use. Um, I really haven't tried to do any others. Um, probably will in the future. Might do a video Worms. on them. Worm wise, I've had a, had a guy give me some worms that I want to try to use. These right here are like custom bait worms. The only thing I don't like is they're really small, but they got a real like chartreuse outside with a black inside. It's, I think they will be pretty neat. Um, probably rig up on like a weedless hook. It's kind of Texas rig style. And I'm sorry for the noise. My neighbor is actually blowing everything off around his house still. <laughs> but uh, I'll probably end up using that more weedless and like I said, it's a very small and nice clear chartreuse color. Uh, my other favorite colors as far as worms, it's like Kiwi Finesse. Uh, this is by Zoom Baits. Uh, here's another, this is more like your shad color Zoom Bait. Works great. And of course, you know you cannot go anywhere without using baby brush hog done in green pumpkin my absolute favorite color and then you just got your regular pumpkin color finesse worms which imitate ideally for your normal earthworm look i've got some custom baits here that was sent to me you can tell they're in vacuum seal packages uh, I think this is a 10 or 12 inch blue, bright blue, beautiful looking worm. It's got a real sweet smell to it. Uh, I really don't know if this is going to work out in the lake that I'm in, but uh, definitely going to give it a try, Texas rig style. And he sent me another color, which is purple, and this is like a eight or nine inch yeah, about an eight inch 
that one kind of smells like cotton candy. <laughs> really does. Cotton candy, grape. Yeah, more grape. But uh, I think those are going to work out pretty good. Uh, can't wait to get out and try them. Uh, I've also got some culprit 12 inch worms. Zoom makes a setup just like this. Uh, this is called Red Shad. It's kind of black with a red belly. Let's take it out right here. I'll show you right quick. Uh, you can tell it's a very good looking worm. Uh, I think it may turn out pretty good. Just something to bounce on the bottom. Kind of just move real finesse style. Something we can try out. Um, but the water is, right now here on the lake I'm at is really kind of dingy, muddy, murky. Uh, I hope it clears up in the next couple week or so. I'd like, I want to get out there. I actually want to go up to the river run which runs into our lake and try to fish off some rock banks and stuff up that way. Um, I want to bring you guys along with me. Uh, got my camera set up now so I should be able to take you guys along with me so you can enjoy see how I do things on the Bass Raider uh, still got to do my review for my Garmin Striker series uh, I want to show you guys how it works how it works out on my Garmin my setup uh, my table uh, I had a couple questions about my table setup it's one of those fly-by-night things I put together uh, made it work and I honestly really enjoyed having it on me. The battery setup I've actually put under the table so the whole table and battery is completely removable. I'm still unsure about it. The weight transfer on the boat now is perfect. Um, I've still got to work on some battery issues though. Uh, the battery I have weighs about 70 pounds and I want to go a lighter battery but I don't know if my trolling motor will hold up to it. What I, what I want to try to do in the future uh, you guys seen my rods that I use at the beginning of this video if I can get to 50 subscribers this is what I'm really going to try for uh, I want to do 50 subscribers and then I'm going to do a rod and reel giveaway and it's not going to be no amazing really high price rod and reel uh, as much as I've fell in love with the black max pro max silver max it'll probably be one of those setups and it'll be shipped right to your door um, but I want you guys to comment below let me know what you think about that if you think a giveaway is pretty good like that uh, I can also do baits y'all just kind of let me know what you think uh, leave it in comments below on this video and we'll go from there hope you guys enjoyed the video i'll catch you later